Every day when I come into work, I'm still astounded that uh, I'm now a full-time teaching faculty at SMU School of Accountancy. Because when I stepped into this building more than a decade ago, I never quite imagined that I would be where I am. So let me take you all the way back to the very start of my smooth journey. Now, the pun and irony is intended, okay, because my journey wasn't exactly smooth. When I had to make the decision of where to go to, to uni uh, for university, most of the people around me decided to take the safe route, right? which was at that point in time, journeying to the West to take social sciences, the hard sciences, engineering. And so they asked me a lot of questions about why do I want to come to SMU to do accounting? Now, for an ultra introvert like myself, uh, it may not seem like it, but I'm actually an ultra introvert. You can ask my wife that. Uh, for an ultra introvert like myself, I would have much rather hidden in the dark corner of a lecture theater, stay anonymous, and not have to speak up in class, right? I would have much rather chosen that than to come to SMU, a bright, young, and exciting university. But there I was, coming to SMU, taking accounting, where I had no prior experience in, and I soon found out that it was a very steep hill to climb. While my peers were picking up A's for fun, I wasn't exactly doing that great. But I still found that I still enjoyed what I was doing, not because I wasn't doing well in, in class, but actually mainly because everything was new to me and I was learning new things every week, every year. And at some point over the four and a half years, I realized that the best way for me to make the most of my university journey was to take some courses outside of my primary discipline of accounting. Uh, even if that might have a negative impact on my GPA, which it did. But that was how I stumbled upon programming, which at that point in time was a very strange thing for accounting students to do. It's very unusual for accounting students to touch anything related to technology back then. And the truth is, I absolutely hated it. Right? And I absolutely hated it to the extent that I told myself when I graduated, I'd never, ever want to touch programming ever again. But as big data grew in prominence, I came to realize that I need to learn how to analyze that kind of data, which was why um, I eventually pushed myself towards doing a postgraduate at my at University of Surrey, where I did analytics and machine learning. Now, as you can tell, uh, if you all if you know this space, um, if you want to do analytics and machine learning, you can't avoid programming. Right? And programming was everywhere, so I had to learn to get used to it. And thankfully, I, had some, I made some very good friends who helped me get comfortable with programming along the way. Now, um, in the projects that I did with them, we did many things. Right? Insurance analysis, supply chain management, logistics management, business process management. Um, it was all about applying the technical skills to doing something practical. And it was the same for our research dissertation. We had to apply our technical skills in a real project. Mine was a collaboration with the local county council uh, where we worked on a bus project to use machine learning to analyze and hopefully enhance uh, the number of people who took buses in the county. Now, I completed that project and was due to start the next phase of the project and had already made plans to stay in the UK for a while longer. But I soon got a call from SMU and I knew that I couldn't ignore it because coming back here to work would mean that I would be coming home to where I belong. Now, since I've been back, I have been raising awareness of the need to develop a new breed of accountants. Accountants who are tech savvy, comfortable with using technology in their accounting and finance work. Now, and I'm blessed and privileged to be a part of the team that develops and continues to refine our second major in accounting data and analytics. Now, remember I said a while ago that I hated programming. I didn't want ever anything to do with programming ever again. Well, here's the big irony, because I now teach programming to accounting students. Uh, the difference this time is that I very much enjoy it. In statistical programming, I teach our students how to use our programming to do basic and foundational analysis in fraud detection and credit risk analysis. But as a firm believer in learning by application, I think the real highlight is in the SMU X course that I teach, which is the Accounting Analytics Capstone course. Now in this SMU X course, we 
use statistical and machine learning techniques to go about solving real-world problems for our clients. Now, this is what I like to call AI for Data Analytics, or ADA for short. Now, as you can tell, there are two components here. Right? AI, the general definition, refers to machines that, have, that can mimic human cognitive functions, such as learning and problem solving. Data analytics, on the other hand, is actually a process whereby we go about evaluating data to answer certain questions that we may have. Now, if we put them together, ADA actually becomes a very simple concept. I use AI as a tool to go about analyzing um, certain data, analyzing for my work. So it's a very simple concept. Now, but where do we see ADA? Right? It's actually everywhere, right? Um, in governments, uh, for infrastructural planning and developments, they use ADA systems to help them. Law enforcement agencies also use ADA to help them analyze uh, crime evidence to bring criminals to justice. Another popular place where we see ADA at work is in e-commerce. Now, I'm very sure many of you have bought some things on Amazon, Taobao, Shopee, Lazada. Probably more Shopee and Lazada, right? Five Five was just a couple of days ago. Now, uh, what we see here very often is when you add something to, a, to the cart, right, you're often encouraged or recommended to bundle that purchase with something else. Right? Uh, you may see things differently, like you may also like, others who bought this also like this, and after a few clicks, you have realized that you just bought way too many things that you didn't intend to buy in the first place. Well, that is ADA at work for you. Or more specifically, recommendation systems. Right? These systems actually help these companies uh, analyze buying patterns so that they can enhance revenue and profits, of course. Now, what we had to do for a capstone project last year was to develop something quite similar. Right? Not as complex, of course, but a recommendation tool that's not too dissimilar from the ones that we see on e-commerce pages. So as you can see on the screen up here, what happens is that when the customer adds to cart dark chocolate chips, right, the system automatically pairs it with either number one, honey, because it's in the same category of baking, or number two, almonds, because it's the same brand as the chocolate chips. So it's quite a simple logic and quite a simple concept here. And this prototype was eventually onboarded by the client as part of the digital transformation journey. Now, as part of the digital transformation journey, it's always good to adopt these AI systems. And it's a good thing, right? Because many businesses are doing the same. But at the same time, it's creating a little bit of uncertainty in some workers because they, they seem to be realizing that their tasks are being computerized. And that, again, is creating a lot of anxiety and fear in the labor force. But I'm here to tell you that this is not a zero-sum game. The fact is that, um, and if it brings you any comfort, right? ADA systems can get things really, really wrong too, right? Sometimes even more than us, right? From incorrect predictions to privacy violations to algorithm bias and many other issues as well. Now, this is why humans need to step in when we use AI systems. Now, take this example. So this was a visualization that uh, was extracted from a dashboard in a loan default ADA project. As you can tell from here, we've got the very big orange bar, right, which represents the southeast region. Now what this tells us is that most of the defaulters come from the southeast region, and we need to do something about it. But if we allow this system to just go automatic on its own, what's going to happen is that this actually induces some sort of a bias and it will result in any new applicant from the Southeast region being immediately rejected. So without humans intervening here, what we realize is that this ADA system is actually a very discriminatory system, and in fact, it's quite unethical, which gives us a very big problem that needs solving. And that's why I believe that accounting is all the more relevant today, and even more relevant in today's world. Now, why is it then that so many accountants are fearful of technology or a bit afraid of what AI can bring to them? Let's see it in another way. AI and technology is always about being different, um, trying to be revolutionary, right? 
changing the status quo, being creative, thinking outside the box. That seemingly goes against the conventions of accounting, which is about upholding strict, uh, stringent accounting standards. And in fact, when you talk about, or when you use the term creative accounting, that's actually a bad word in the profession, right? So it seems like there's some sort of uh, tension here. But they're actually not mutually exclusive, okay? They're not actually mu mutually exclusive. And I believe that my unconventional divergent paths of accounting and technology actually merge very nicely together. And that requires a bit of a change in perspective to see things a little more clearly. Now, accountants have all the while been seen as gatekeepers, right? being trained uh, to be the lines of defense in an organization when it comes to governance and risk. So in due time, accountants should be expected to and ought to step up to the plate as gatekeepers to safeguard these AI systems and prevent them from going rogue. Uh, that can, in a way, keep a fine balance in an ADA world. The truth is, we have to face this issue, which is if we want to pit humans against AI, particularly when we're talking about speed and efficiency, we're going to lose, hands down, right? It's no competition at all, right? We're going to lose. Right? But rather than living in daily fear that AI is going to take over the world, going to replace us, we should embrace these technologies and realize that we can actually use them to help us do our jobs better. And this doesn't just apply to accounting, of course. It applies to many other areas too. In the legal profession, it can help lawyers to see through contracts a lot faster, save them a lot of time. Right? In the medical profession, the doctors can make more accurate medical diagnoses. Now, at the same time, it's important for all of us to remember that the essence of human dignity lies in our consciousness. What good is it if we gain the whole world in our pursuit of scientific and technological advancement, but we lose our souls in the process? Now, it's therefore imperative for all of us to collectively come together and develop ethical and moral standards to keep these AI systems in check and, in a way, balance the scales in an ADA world. Now, so you might be thinking, what does this mean for you? Right? What's your takeaway for today? Now, as you chart your own journey forward, don't be afraid to take the unconventional path, right? Because taking an interdisciplinary approach to learning can help us better understand the world that we live in. It can help us develop new perspectives, and these will enable us to learn to think critically. The AI of today can't think like us. So if we want to make a positive impact in an ADA world of today and of the future, we ought to cling to what makes us distinctly human while embracing all these technology. Ultimately, university is a place where we learn how to learn. You may, like me, have to learn, relearn, and sometimes even unlearn certain things as you embark on your journey ahead. Thank you.